how to use the paste inside command to create amazing designs with shapes. Now I've got a design here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy that and paste it inside a shape. And I'm going to extend that by pasting inside groups, etc. First thing to do, create a design. So layer menu, new layer, fill that with a gradient. Now it's not the most exciting gradient, so I'm going to go to the swatches, key panels here, view menu, studio, and go for swatches as well as layers. Now select a swatch. Now if you haven't got any of these gradients, you can quickly create gradients. You can find many tutorials on the Graphic Extras channel about gradients and gradient creation. What you can also do now is layer menu and new layer filter layer and go for maybe distort. You can use any of the others, of course, as well. But twirl is the one I'm going to use here. You can change the origin point, you can change the angle, and you can also change the radius. So you can create amazing colorful designs now. Now, this layer, this gradient design, as well as the live filter layer, can be copied, copied into the pasteboard. So you can go over to the layers panel, select both of those, and we're both selected. Go right click and copy. And what you can then do is create a shape. And you can paste this design as well as the live filter layer into that design. Create a new document. Go to the shapes, and there's a variety of different shapes. There's ellipses, arrows, stars, etc. Select one of those. I'm going to go with the arrow. I'm going to change the colour, so I'm going to go for something like red. You could put green, blue, etc. And then with that shape selected, you can go to the edit menu and you can paste inside. And that design you created earlier with the live filter layer is pasted inside. Paste inside. And you can see over on the layers panel, it's below the arrow design. And you can still modify any of those settings. So you can change the arrow. You could convert it to curves and change the node if you wish. You can also double click the entry there in the twirl and modify the twirl. And you can see the red background color for the shape coming through, obviously because of the transparency with the twirl. And you can change that at any point. So you can double click at any time and modify that design again. What you can also do now, go up to the other one, you can select that. And then of course what you can do, you can add a twirl or any other live filter layer to that as well. And the thing is, when it's created, if a layer or live filter layer is placed in the incorrect position, you can always also drag them and move them to a different position. So live filter layer, distort and twirl again. Now I want the, I want the arrow to be distorted. Obviously, clearly, it isn't being distorted here. So I'm going to reposition it in a sec. So there's the design, the twirl design to the arrow. But it's not because it's in slightly the wrong position. So just go down to the twirl. There's an entry there for the twirl just below the arrow. Just select that and drag. Drag it up above. And now you can see the arrow design has been twirled. It's still a vector design, you can still modify it, change things. So now you've got a combination of twirl and also another twirl within it. What you can also do, you can add other live filter layers or maybe adjustment layers. So you can go up to the layer menu. And there's a variety of different options. So, or you can, of course, another thing you can do, you can always add effects as well if you wish to do that beforehand. So, with the arrow selected, what you can do, maybe go and add a drop shadow or an outer shadow. 
set the radius, set the offset, intensity, etc., as well as the angle. Just push those up to reasonably high levels and just move that around, as well as maybe change the opacity. Must admit, sometimes when I do that, I move the sliders and it doesn't really seem to add much of a shadow. It's a very subtle shadow. There it is. You can now see it with the offset. Close that. So you can see your design there. But what you can also do, you can go and add additional live filter layers and also adjustments to that design. Or maybe if you want, tweak the effect again. Just go down to the FX in the layers panel and you can modify it at any time. You can get rid of the shadow. If you don't want the shadow, get rid of it. But you can also add a bevel or maybe 3D or an outline. Close that. So you can create some quite interesting designs, very quick and easy, just simply by that paste inside with that design there. Now I'm just going to quickly add a new adjustment layer via the layer menu, and I'm going to go with HSL, but I could go with black and white, I could go with any of the others, and then of course what you can do, you can then modify them, you can go back to it and modify them at any point as well. So if you change the colour here, close that panel, what you can do, you can go always go back that entry in the there and double click and bring it up and modify the color again. Now that because it's above the arrow design and all the colors, it's modified all the colors of the arrow. Select all of those lights. So you've got the adjustment, you've got the thing. Just go to the group command. So you can just group them. It's nice to put them into a group. And you can always expand it out if you wish. But well, that's group things. If you group things, you can you've got it in a nice, nice group. Very handy. What you can do, you can copy the group. So right click and copy. Now what you can do, you can move this design out of the way now. Or maybe just deselect it. You can go to the layers on the right side, there's a little arrow. You can remove it if you don't want it to be displayed. Just push it over there. Now I'm just going to create another design. I'm just going to go to the various tools. I'm not going to use an arrow this time. I'm going to go with maybe a donut. Why not? Just as good as any. Just create a donut. Now, of course, the color of the donut is currently red because that was the color I created earlier, but you can always modify the color to make it maybe purple. Now what you can do, you can paste inside again. It's selected. So while it's selected, you can go to paste inside. And now you can see your twirled arrow has been pasted inside that design. Now you don't have to just have one. You could paste inside, paste inside, paste inside multiple times. So you could get three or four of those arrow designs inside that donut. Just select the, the arrow, go to the move tool and just move it around. So if you don't want that position currently in it, move it. And of course you can resize it. It's a vector design. All the effects are vectors. and So you can modify them. You can increase the size. You can rotate it. Don't have to keep it as displayed. Again, select the donut. You can go to edit menu and paste inside. And another one will be pasted inside. And again, it's all below the donut. You can see it slightly inset. And you can move it around still. And of course, all of the effects, as well as adjustments, can still be modified within that. So if you want to, you can go and change them. Clear the previous one. There's a bit of distraction seeing the design a bit lower. And with that selected, you can then go to the donut again. Maybe paste another one inside. So edit menu and paste inside, and then you've got your another design. And again, you can move that around. Just reposition it. And again, what you can do, it doesn't have to be an arrow anymore. You could still convert it to curves. You could still use the node tool to modify it, and so on and so on. It's a live effect. And you can still rotate it or transform it. So you, you can see now below the donut, you've got those three entries.
and you can move the donut around and you can see the donuts and the arrows stay correctly relative to the donut. You can expand out one of those arrow designs and double click the twirl and it will bring up a panel. And what you can do, you can mod and you see you can modify the color within that donut only for that arrow and for that gradient. And of course you could, if you wish, add another adjustment layer, change it and tweak it in numerous ways. And also you could, of course, double click on that HSL adjustment and change just for that arrow, not any of the others. All the other arrows will remain the same color as before. So you've got now quite a complex donut and arrow design. Of course, you can extend it again. You can then right click that. And you could copy that if you wish. Copy. Or you could, of course, add additional effects. You could go down to the bottom and use FX, add that to the donut. I'm just going to remove the donut. So nothing's then I'm just going to go and create another shape. I could use a star, I could use a square circle, rounded rectangle, as good as any. And again, I can change the color there. And now, of course, the if I change it to that color or green or whatever, when I paste inside, of course, it's still got the transparency, you've got the donut, so you will still see the green paste inside. So the donut now is pasted inside and you can resize it. You can select it, you can move it around and you can resize it. So if you want to scale it down a bit, you can also rotate it. Go back to the that shape and then go edit menu and paste inside again. So you get the donut appear again on top of that one. Now with that donut, you can now add effects to that if you wish. Go down there, FX, and it will only be added to that donut that you've currently got selected. So you can maybe go for 3D or bevel, give a bevel to that one. The other donut is untouched. You could also add, of course, an outer shadow. Or maybe color overlay or a gradient overlay. Select that and then go to radius and offset, increase those bits so you can actually see a shadow and change intensity, etc., as well as the opacity. So you can do this over and over again. So you can create now, you, you've got obviously a rounded rectangle with donuts inside, with arrows inside, and they're all still live, still editable. So you can go to any of those entries, expand them out, and then modify those. Obviously, the more and more things you add, the more complex it gets. Also, maybe the slower it will get because, of course, it's just you're adding more and more to it. And it will get to a point where it becomes a little bit more sluggish. But you can still now still modify. Another problem, of course, when you, you get to a certain point of complexity is you're not actually certain sometimes what you're changing without, of course, deselecting everything else just to isolate only the thing you want to edit. And that's a way of doing it, of course. But if you've got like 15 items, you don't want to have to keep deselecting, selecting, deselecting. So it's a bit, yeah. So you can see I can modify the twirl. I can change the angle as well as the radius. And of course, I could paste inside yet another design into that. And I can group those all back up to the top. And I can, of course, group all those as well. Well, they're already part of a group. But what I can do, I can always, of course, still right click and copy. So I can copy that design. Also, what I can do, I can 
hold down the Alt or Option key and drag and duplicate all of those live filter effects as well as adjustment layers and so on and so on. So you can create three or four layers of these. And each are independent of the other. So you can go to any of the donuts within one of those and tweak, say, the twirls or the colors, or maybe add effects just to those, or maybe modify the effects if there's effects already added. So you can add a bevel to that rounded rectangle. And you can, of course, because it's a vector, you can increase the size, you can fill the entire screen, or maybe shrink it down, or maybe rotate it. And it's all controlled via the layers panel. And also what you can do, you can also add additional live filter effects layers to that as well. So if you want to apply a twirl to that, you can do that. You can also, like I say, rotate it. Rotate that design. And all of the arrows, all of the donuts will change relative to that rotation as well as scale. And you could continue to do this. You could paste that design inside another shape and so on and so on. But what you can also do, if you want, if you don't want it to be a shape anymore, what you can do, you can go to filter menu and now this will make it just a pixel layer. So filter menu, distort and deform. Select that. And now what you can do, all the other ones are untouched. So that all the others will still, those rounded rectangles will still be vectors. But now this layer, you've turned into a pixel and all of the structure is frozen. That's that. It's just for that layer, not any of the other shapes. They're all still totally editable if you wish. But what you can do, of course, you can modify, deform that design. Now you'll notice it is a bit slower because of all the complexity to it because it takes a bit, but you, know, you can drag, drag that out. Actually, it's quite quick. It's actually quite an amazingly fast program considering the amount of complexity there in that design. And you can tweak the pins. You can change the constraint. Obviously, I, I prefer similarity. I always think it creates the best designs. You can just modify it and create some really wavy designs all over the place like that. Or you can maybe use it with the mirror filter up to you. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. That's the paste inside command. And I am certain you can combine paste inside with many other shapes and many other designs, assets, etc., as well. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials, Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, GIMP, etc. Please add some comments. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.